And welcome to Hannity. And tonight, left wing radicals are directly to blame for inciting violence at Donald Trump's rallies over the weekend. On Friday, agitators forced Trump to cancel his scheduled event in Chicago over security concerns. Now, the disruptors were encouraged by the likes of the unrepentant domestic terrorist friend of Obama, Bill Ayers. He was in the middle of the unrest and even posted a video of the protests on Twitter. And he wrote, We shut Trump down. Beautiful gathering of anti racist youth. But Ayers is not the only one. The left wing group MoveOn.org, which has endorsed Bernie Sanders for president, also took credit for what took place in Chicago on Friday. Now, MoveOn.org is now openly soliciting donations to help create even more chaos at future political events of Donald Trump. And on Saturday, a man who, according to a report, says he's a Bernie Sanders supporter, he took it a step further. He tried to rush the stage while Trump was speaking. The Secret Service was forced to intervene. Here with Reaction, author of the New York Times bestseller, Duplicity. He's a former Speaker of the House, Fox News contributor, Newt Gingrich. Mr. Speaker, it's, it's sort of like the same left-wing, I'll use the word fascism, that we see on college campuses. Mark Thiessen had a piece today. Condi Rice, other people have been shut down, denied opportunities to speak because they're conservative. Seems like the same thing's happening here. Thoughts? Well, it, it, look, first of all, the actions Friday night clearly were left wing fascism, and you're exactly right. But I'm, I'm really saddened by any Republican who wants to blame Trump. Uh, Donald Trump wasn't the reason, for example, that, uh, as you point out, Condi Rice gets canceled, Ben Carson gets canceled on the campus, Ayan Hirsi Ali gets canceled on the campus. The fact is, you have this entire movement of fascism, which is saying, if you don't agree with me, I'm going to shut up your right to speak, I'm going to intimidate you, I'm going to bully you. And they're terrified of Trump because he seems to be strong enough and dynamic enough to take him head on. But it's worse than that in the news media. Uh, you have on MSNBC, for example, Rachel Maddow suggesting that for Trump to go to Chicago, Cleveland, or St. Louis is provocative because of racial incidents that have occurred in those three cities. Now, imagine an American television figure suggesting that a presidential candidate shouldn't visit Chicago, Cleveland, or St. Louis. This is madness. Yep. And I think we have some obligation to say to the news media, you know, you need to get off this Trump bashing and report honestly, not just in the presidential race, but on the campuses, what is happening. You know, you have all these reports, George Soros, funding groups like Move On and Black Lives Matter, and then, of course, Occupy Wall Street. And all of these groups now seem to want to coordinate, and they're fundraising off it because they want to create as much chaos as possible. Um, Monmouth County did a poll out of Florida. Get this. 22% of respondents more likely to vote for Trump as a result of what happened in Chicago. How do you interpret that? Well, I think the numbers are going to go up because I think people realize that the sources of confusion and chaos are left wing uh, fascists who want to impose their way of life on us. They want to impose their values on us. Remember, the, the first really big test case was Scott Walker as governor of, of Wisconsin who had a key moment when he had thousands of people in the Capitol. He had people sleeping in. He had people occupying the state Capitol. They had lost the election fair and square. They'd lost the election for the governor. They lost the election for state representative. They lost the election for the Senate. And their reaction was to take it to the streets and try to browbeat the governor and the legislature against what they had promised the people of Wisconsin they would do. I think if you see Trump win or Cruz win, if either one goes to Washington and brings real reform, you're going to see these kind of militants willing to go out and do everything they can in the street to try to stop what they're losing at yeah. the ballot box. I, I'm going to I put a montage together of incendiary language of the left. You know, they're saying, well, Donald Trump said this or Donald Trump said that. But, you know, remember Barack Obama said they bring a knife, we bring a gun. Get in their face. Remember he said that in the, in the 2008 election. Here's the amazing thing. Here is an unrepentant terrorist, domestic terrorist friend of the president that's part of what happened in Chicago on Friday night. That's Bill Ayers, uh, part of the Weather Underground that bombed the Pentagon, the Capitol, New York City Police Headquarters. He's a part of this. Nobody seems to want to ask Obama and the Democrats about the president's relationship. He began his career in that domestic terrorist house. That, to me, is such a big story 
not a few words uttered by Donald Trump. Why was the president friends with an unrepentant terrorist is a bigger story to me. Well, look, I, th I think what you're about to discover, and I had a reporter today say this to me, totally off the record, because he would be in danger of losing his job if he said it publicly, that he had never seen the elite media as totally frantically hostile as they are to Donald Trump. And the danger for the elite media, whether it's CBS News or MSNBC or you name it, the danger is they're going to totally alienate the average American because the average American is watching the video. They're seeing what's really happening and they're beginning to put the pieces together from college campuses to Madison to what happened in Chicago. Now, and I think that's going to be a real problem for the, for the news media. I, I thought we were always taught by the left never blame the victim. For example, uh, you have the Unabomber in his hut. The Al Gore's book, Earth and the Balance, was in there. Did Al Gore inspire the Unabomber? That wouldn't be fair. Or you can take any number of examples where left wing words do not cause people. You cannot say that words are causing people to be violent. But that's the narrative that they're trying to. It seems that there is a sure. narrative that they're trying to advance that Donald Trump brought this on himself, which is the the most intellectually dishonest argument that I think I've heard in this entire race, which has been pretty crazy up to this point. You know, Gandhi said, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. Early on, the news media wanted to ignore Trump, and then they wanted to laugh at Trump. Now, all of a sudden, they're realizing he may become the Republican nominee, and he might even win the general election. And that has them so frantic uh, that they are prepared to cover anything in a biased way in order in, in the last desperate steps of trying to stop Trump. And that's what you're seeing. So the, the fascist left can do whatever it wants. Yeah. It's going to have as its big and, ally much of the American And the guy media. that attacked him, I'll roll the video again. This guy who was bragging on Twitter that something was going to happen, this guy has been, was released hours after he tried to attack a presidential candidate. Could you imagine the indignation and outrage if... He had tried to attack Hillary or Bernie Sanders. Uh, you know, I, I'm having a hard time. I mean, he literally jumped over the barricade and, and, and literally tried to get to Trump. Now he's being heralded on CNN as a, as a great hero. Right. And, that, and that's because you have an entire block of people in the media who are so paranoid about Donald Trump that they will rally around anybody who does anything to try to stop Trump, even if it is totally un-American, totally illegal, totally violates our system and our tradition. And this is going to be a very big moment for the American people.